terms and definitions. First, we go through uh, the general terms and definitions uh, as per ASME 5, 2019. The area of interest is the specific portion of object that's to be evaluated. So practically the area of interest is what you are checking from that component or the actual component. A defect is a flaw or a discontinuity whose shape, size, orientation, location, or properties do not meet the specified acceptance criteria. So if it is continuity is uh, over and above the acceptance criteria, it's called the defect. A defect is always a discontinuity. But well, let's put it this way. The discontinuity turns into a defect if the size or the shape of it or the type of the discontinuity is not accepted according to acceptance criteria. So the discontinuity is lack of continuity um, and uh, indication that you receive or response you receive or what you observe that is not normal and that need to be evaluated whether it is relevant discontinuity or non-relevant discontinuity. Um, what is it is inherent, it was intentionally put there say two uh, part of the metal were fit up and you can see a line between the fit up. So that line is inherent there, that's intentionally put there. So that's a, non-relevant discontinuity, that's not intentional. Um, evaluation is determination of whether a relevant indication is acceptable or not. So when you look at a indication or a, a flow or a discontinuity, first you need to find out what it is. I mean, shape-wise, size-wise, type-wise, what was the reason for that? And uh, that's called interpretation. So once you size the flow, um, then you need to find out whether that particular discontinuity is acceptable or not. Uh, and this process uh, to compare it with the uh, acceptance criteria and accept or reject it um, called evaluation. And the sizing of the flow and uh, uh, measuring the flow, that's interpretation. Examination is exclusively for non-destructive uh, examination uh, within the context of asthma section five. Um, and it's a process of determining the condition of a component or the area of a component. And false indication uh, is an indication that is uh, interpreted to be caused by a condition other than a discontinuity or imperfection. For example, there was a dirt there, or um, there was, uh, it was, uh, say, the uh, NDE was too sensitive and it took some spurious uh, indication, some noises, which was not relevant. So that's called false indication. False indication also is a non relevant indication. A flow is an imperfection or discontinuity, uh, uh, which is detectable by non-destructive testing method you are using. And flow characterization is to find uh, the size, shape, orientation, location, and any other properties of that flow uh, based on the NDE examination or uh, the response you get. And indication is a response or evidence from a non-destructive examination that you need to interpret. That means uh, find out what it is uh, and in order to determine whether it's relevant or not. And inspection is actually the observation. So QC, uh, normally term quality control is actually doing the job. Inspection is observation that everything is in order it's complying with the codes. And normally inspection is carried out by the client's uh, rep or client's inspector. Interpretation is the process of determining whether an indication is non-relevant or relevant. And as we said, uh, compare it with the 
and then trying to find out whether it is uh, the size, the shape of it, and uh, so that then uh, once you know what it is, what is the size, where is it located, then you go for evaluation, which is uh, comparing it with acceptance criteria and accept and reject. Limited certification, uh, every NDT meter, including UT, has got different techniques. For example, if somebody is only qualified to do lamination check with a zero degree compression prop, uh, so that's a limited certification in this sense, because he's only qualified to do with zero degree of compression normal prop. He cannot do, he's not trained and uh, qualified for angle beam or other NDE method. So that's called limited certification. Uh, practically, uh, a UT, in this case, it's got several techniques. So um, you are a level two UT or level one UT, if you know all the techniques, if you know uh, just specific techniques, then uh, that's limited certification that will be written in your certificate that you're only qualified to do that particular job. Uh, method, there are 16 methods in uh, NDE, such as radiography, RT, ultrasonic UT, magnetic particle, MT, penet liquid penetrant, PT or penetrant test, visual uh, testing is VT, Leak testing, LT, and electromagnetic, eddy current, ET, and acoustic emission, AE. Let me brought some of the popular ones here. So these are the methods. Now, within the UT, there are different techniques that you do the job. So that's the difference between method and techniques. And non-destructive examination, uh, as the name suggests, is non-destructive. It's an examination that's non-destructive, so it's not... Uh, damaging the component uh, while examining uh, the material or component in order to find out, uh, detect, locate, or measure, interpret, or evaluate flows, um, and hence non-destructive examination. This is uh, versus uh, destructive examination, a destructive test actually, such as uh, tensile test when you break a specimen to find its strength, is ill the strength, is the ultimate strength, or a Sharpie test where you break a specimen again to find out its uh, toughness, or a bend test when you bend the specimen to find its ductility. Um, so this is the differentiation. A non-relevant indication is caused by a condition or type of discontinuity that's not rejectable. Uh, so false indication, for example, are non-relevant. A procedure actually tells you how to perform a, a job or, uh, for example, a UT procedure tells you how to do the UT, what is the scope, what is the purpose, uh, what equipment to use, what sequence of actions you have to use, and how you fill in the report, and uh, what's the qualification of personnel who do this job, etc. So it uh, it's, tells you the sequence of actions that's the main part of a procedure. And procedure qualification, uh, you have to somehow demonstrate that the procedure you have written and you are working according to is actually can detect the minimum required uh, flow or uh, the type of the flow that you, you, you want, you, are, you need to detect by that procedure. Uh, so you normally, uh, in order to demonstrate that, you get a, a block with a known uh, defect in it. For example, we got V1, V2 block with uh, uh, drilled holes in it. And uh, if you can detect those holes, uh, then that means uh, first you calibrate your uh, uh, instrument at the same time, and also demonstrate that actually this procedure is working and you can detect the flow or discontinuity. Reference standard is the construction code. For example, uh, ASME section eight uh, for construction code for pressure vessel or ASME B31.3 construction code for piping. Um, and uh, it tells uh, what is a qualification of ND personnel should be. 
uh, obviously it refers to SNTTC 1A and uh, as the qualification. Uh, and also it tells you most importantly, the acceptance criteria. So the acceptance criteria is not in asthma section five. Asthma section five is simply uh, tells you how to uh, do the non-destructive examination. And, but it doesn't tell you what's the acceptance criteria. It's always referred to the construction code or reference standard. Now let's look at the, some uh, particular terms and definition uh, for ultrasonic examination. Now, amplitude, um, as you can see here, uh, is the vertical pulse or height of a signal here. And uh, each two peak has, or each two trough is one wavelength. And uh, the velocity of sound uh, is actually uh, made of uh, the wavelength divided by uh, the time, it, uh, the number of frequency it passes. We'll talk about frequency later on, but this is the amplitude. This is a frequency of the sound and the wavelength is between two peaks, can be distinguished as peaks. Uh, Angle beam, uh, it's a probe that uh, is directed at the angle. So the wedge actually uh, is designed so that when you put the prop on the wedge, um, the, the prop is at an angle, hits the, the material. Uh, in this case, it is, this angle could be 45 degree, 60 degree or 70 degree. And obviously if it is 70 degree, uh, then you can be closer to the location because this angle is increased. If it's 45 degree, you have to go back. So you hit uh, uh, this indication. So the sound path goes this way. And this is the angle, uh, which we call the angle of the prop. And this is a surface distance. And as the angle increased, uh, the surface distance also is increased. A scan, a method of uh, data presentation utilizing a horizontal baseline. As you can see, this is the baseline here um, that indicates distance. So this is distance or time and a vertical deflection from the baseline, which indicates amplitude. So this is amplitude and this is the distance or time. So when the sound hits, the first reflection is a primary uh, reflection and as you can see here uh, it hits at uh, uh, it keeps uh, hitting the object at uh, uh, equal time interval and you can see back, ref back reflection here and then uh, if you come here you can see that you got uh, some indications here and then uh, you got so this might be some porosity of that. And from the distance from the uh, primary indication to the, uh, that one would be the uh, depth of the shape of this would indicate what type of discontinuity it is. This actually tells you also gives you uh, this new uh, UT machines give you some number also here. So you know exactly what the distance is and what's the length of the indication. So this length from here to here would be the length of that indication that you see. Attenuation, uh, when the sounds go through a, a medium, obviously it gets weakened as it goes by the ultrasound. So, uh, and it is uh, measured by decibel per unit length. And as the sound goes, it gets attenuated until it dies, totally dies, depending on the depth. So uh, then that's why you have to use uh, with various uh, uh, wavelength and frequency. So if you've got a longer frequency, uh, longer wavelength, then the penetration is more, but then the resolution or um, uh, the smallest defect you can, measure uh, becomes, uh, you know, uh, the size becomes more. So, so you, it's not that sensitive. 
at the same time, if you use lower frequency, the resolution is more and you can detect the smaller discontinuities, but then the penetration is less. So there is always a trade-off here. So attenuation is measured by uh, decibel per unit length. And, uh, and we can use this phenomena actually uh, to sort of calibrate and find out the sensitivity of the uh, UT, we will explain later on. An attenuator uh, device for altering the amplitude of ultrasonic indication in known increments, like two decibel, three decibel, uh, six decibel, 12 decibel, usually in decibels. So that's called the attenuator. You step down or step up to see uh, what is the effect of that. Uh, axial direction, um, direction of sound beam parallel to the component, uh, to the major axis. So that's axial uh, is always uh, to the major axis is axial and perpendicular to that would be a transverse direction, obviously. And back reflection, when a sound wave hits and comes back. So this is a single uh, zero degree or normal probe or compression probe. And you can see you get two response here. So the first response is a reference line as an initial one. And the second response is, uh, you can see the same height, but at a distance here. So by the time it goes and hits and come back, that's a back wall echo, back reflection. So <clears throat> this distance would be practically the distance of the, the thickness of the material. So you can determine the thickness of the material by very simply and very accurately by an, uh, 90 degree probe or compression probe. Now, if there is a defect in between, right? So some of the waves hits come back the back volume that you see same place here, but smaller. That's because it's it's been uh, some of the sounds have been uh, uh, have been hit uh, the defect which was in the middle and came back. So you don't have the full sound going up and down like the first picture. So in second picture, you still get a back wall echo. <clears throat> so you know that's the thickness of the material again, EP. And uh, then you see a, a strong signal in the middle. And that is the one that's coming back from the defect in say, for example, lamination. And uh, um, this distance, the D would be where the depth of that defect is located. And if you want to find the length of that defect, so you move the probe from one end where you get this picture. So it's not actually hitting the defect. You move it this way and bring it here. And then by the time you get this defect until you get this defect and it's still back to this defect. So you're coming from this end to this end, uh, left side to right side. So that would be the length of the defect, practically, that you are hitting. Uh, back wall echo, again, um, same thing. It hits, go back. You got the initial pulse, you got defect echo, and you got a back wall echo here. And back wall signal. So, this is back wall echo or back wall signal. Uh, There's an angle probe and it hits a defect and comes back and receive it here. So this is a back wall and this is what actually hits the defect. And you can see the indication there on an angle beam. Uh, baseline is actually this line. The time of flight, distance, travel, horizontal, across the A scan, CRP display for no signal condition. So this is called baseline. This is called initial pulse, the first pulse you get. And this is the pulse you get from the flow. You can see here, depending on the distance from the probe from the center, and you know what is the angle it is hitting, and you can easily find out uh, uh, this, uh, uh, where the depth of this defect is, right? So you always uh, 
we will explain this. A half a skip is half a length is going and full skip is, is hitting and going up. So that's a full skip, let's call it. Beam spread, divergence of ultrasonic beam. As you can see, beam diversion is half of beam spread through a medium. So this is the how the, the ultrasonic beam uh, diverges. It's like a, a torch uh, light. So you, you can always uh, sort of control that, that the angle is hitting and uh, which is hitting. So that's called beam spread. And B scan, we'll explain. Uh, so if you're scanning from the side, the cross section is a B scan. The C scan is the plan view from the top. And the A scan is actually, you are, this is the A scan. So it's a very good representative of that. So A scan is a linear one. And as you plan, you're going through that. Uh, just uh, through the thickness, the A scan. The B scan is cross section and the C scan is the plan. Calibration, uh, now obviously you, every measuring instrument needs to be calibrated and practically you're comparing the readings with a standard, uh, um, another instrument or a calibration block. Uh, a norm, and the best thing is to do with a calibration block. So a calibration block has known defect, known holes, drilled holes with the size, uh, uh, you know, the diameter of the hole, you know, the location, the depth of the hole. And uh, with that known, uh, you throw the sound in towards that by a probe and place the probe on the calibration block. And then uh, if you get, uh, uh, correct reading, so you practically calibrated your instrument. Uh, for example, here, um, some blocks, they have three holes. So you hit the first hole and hit the second hole and then go back and hit the third hole. And you know at what depth diameter they are and, and what response you get there. So you practically uh, calibrate your uh, instruments here. So what reading you are getting here. Circumferential direction, as I said, is perpendicular to the component's major axis uh, as against the uh, axial direction. So on a cylindrical components, circumferential direction is perpendicular to the component's major axis. Uh, contact testing, so as the name suggests, uh, you put the probe directly on the test piece and you use a coupling because uh, the ultrasound beam is get attenuated very fast if there is an air between the test piece and the probe. So you use a coupling so to facilitate that. And, uh, and a coupling is a substance used between the search unit and examination surface uh, to permit or improve transmission of ultrasonic energy. It can be oil, grease, wax, anything, uh, if allowed. Uh, CRT is a cathode ray tube. It's practically a display. And C scan is a plan view, as we explained uh, pictorially up there, of the uh, test piece. Damping search unit, limiting the duration of a signal from a search unit subject to a pulse input, because this... <clears throat> Uh, if you keep hitting that, you get a lot of signals, uh, you know, continuously sending sound waves. So you're dumping, you're sending one peak and then dumping it and then sending another peak uh, sound wave and then dumping it so that you can uh, have a better resolution. Uh, so practically, uh, elect by electrically or mechanically decreasing the amplitude of successive cycles. Uh, so a higher dumped pulse have increased resolution and sensitivity while a lower dump pulse have increased penetration power because you are sending too many uh, sound waves so you are penetrating better. But then uh, there are uh, too much noise you are getting at the result and you can, you need to uh, write sort of <laughs> distinguish between which pulse you get from and which is the initial pulse, which is the back volume of what is coming from the defect. There would be too many signals. You don't want that. So that's why you dump it. Um, just set one peak. 
dump it, and then you get increased resolution and sensitivity. And decibel is uh, same thing as dumping is 20 times um, log of um, logarithm uh, of the ratio of two alters of a signal amplitude. So if you say increase, uh, decrease uh, by three decibels, you should get half of the value. You just want to check uh, that the soundness of your instruments. If you do six decibel, which is very famous and it's called six decibel technique, you get a quarter of that. So the 80% should come to 20% of the full screen height, the response you get and so forth. So if you do two decibel, then it's 25% just, it's 75, 25% dumped. If it's three decibel, it's a one half dumped. And if six decibel, it's, um, uh, it's quarter dumped. So normally we use at this range, uh, uh, six decibel or two decibel. Uh, diffraction, uh, when uh, wave front direction has been changed by an obstacle or an inhomogeneity in the medium other than by reflection or refraction. Uh, we'll discuss this later on. Um, distance amplitude curve, uh, practically uh, you, when you send the initial pulse and then you send the second pulse and then it gets attenuated and then you send the, the that's a back reflection of the third pul uh, pulse. Like the pulse goes up, so that's the first indication you get. That's the second cycle, the third cycle and fourth cycle. So as uh, different distances, right? Uh, so there is an attenuation of the sound and uh, it gets reduced. So that way you can uh, uh, create a distance amplitude curve by connecting this peak of these lines. Uh, so that is useful to find the depth of the discontinuities. So the amplitude, it depends on the distance practically. A dual search unit, as you can see, this is a dual search unit. It both receives and transmits uh, elements. Echo is an indication of reflected energy. Um, so that's a back wall echo, for example. And frequency, we have explained uh, effective ultrasonic wave frequency of the system and uh, pulse repetition, uh, number of times per second, and electroacoustic session is excited by the pulse uh, generator to produce a pulse of ultrasound energy. This is called also pulse repetition rate. So you send one pulse and then seconds, another pulse after certain time. So uh, that's called pulse repetition rate. Okay, so it's a pulse duration by the time the pulse goes and then dies down and then second pulse, second wave of the sound you're sending, ultrasound. Uh, immersion testing, when you immerse it in normally water, um, this is for high frequency because uh, the more the frequency of the probe, uh, the thinner it is, like 25 megawatt frequency, megahertz frequency is very, very thin crystal or quartz and you can't really use it uh, in any other method than immersion testing because it can break very easily. Uh, so normally we use, uh, with a portable probes, we use uh, one to five megahertz and immersion testing, you can do a scan, C scan. So uh, practically the probe is in the water and the water works as a coupling and the object is placed there. Now the, uh, it's going to give you an excellent C scan and B scan, but the, uh, the advantage is it's not portable and it needs a lot of setup and it's an expensive way of scanning. Indication, uh, any response or marks you get from the presence of a reflector. Um, initial pulse, we already discussed this. So you get the first pulse, initial pulse, and then they got a pulse from the, in the middle from the floor, and then you got a back wall pulse. So part of this is back wall, the, when the whole thing goes uh, back wall. Uh, and because uh, part of it is reflected earlier, uh, so this is in the middle because this just go half of say, 
uh, or one third of the depth, or two thirds of the depth, and comes back when it hits the defect. So you see this uh, uh, pulse uh, back pulse from the defect earlier in the middle, whereas the the back surface reflection is the hole through the thickness and takes more time. So you see it later on. So that's why, um, and this is the initial pulse to compare them with this, uh, with the flow detection and back one. And you see that this got attenuated because part of it was deflected by the flow. Interface is a boundary between two materials. Uh, longitudinal wave, uh, we have uh, basically two types of wave, uh, I mean, longitudinal and shear wave. As you can see, longitudinal wave, it expands and contracts and along the direction that's traveling. So that's called longitudinal wave. Whereas uh, shear wave is actually sinusoidal and uh, it actually vibrates perpendicular to the direction of particle motion. Uh, when the sound goes through, is perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation. So longitudinal is, is expands and contracts, or direction of particle motion is along the wave propagation, or, whereas in shear wave, it is uh, perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. That's the main difference of longitudinal waves and um, shear waves. Loss of back reflection. So absence or significant reduction in the amplitude of indication from back surface of the part under examination, that can be because the back surface was very rough and uh, it scattered. So you didn't uh, get any backfall echo uh, when it hit the other end of the object. Manual ultrasonic examination, technique of ultrasonic examination performed with search units that are manipulated by hand without the aid of any mechanical guidance system. Um, well, practically doing it manual uh, with hand and moving the probe, you know, scanning noise, any undesired signal that needs to, that tends to interfere with the reception, interpretation or processing of the desired signal. That's why you dump it. You've got dumping unit, you reduce the decibel. Uh, so you just see uh, those signals that you want to see. You don't see too many, you know, as far as signals and noises. Uh, piezoelectric element. Uh, so this is uh, piezoelectric, as you can see here, the blue one. And then you've got backing material here. Then you've got the case and everything else. And then it, uh, and the wear plate. So wear plate, the way that it actually protects the... Uh, Piezoelectric from you know being worn off or so so you put it there, and it's a good transmitter also of the sound. And then uh, you can see that uh, both sides of piezoelectric there are wires that uh, once you put uh, electrical pulse, the piezoelectric start vibrating, and that vibration is in the form of ultrasound is get generated, right? And it goes through. So that's the whole point of the. So piezoelectric materials are when you uh, deform it, it produces electrical charge. On the other hand, when you uh, apply electrical charge or connect it to a positive negative wire, it starts mechanical vibration. And that mechanical vibration produces ultrasound. So that's the basic of ultrasound. Primary reference response. So the ultrasonic response from the basic calibration reflector uh, at the specified sound path distance. So this is adjusted to a specified percentage of full screen height, say 80%. Pulse is a short wave train of mechanical vibration. So you just give a, a very short wave train. That means you don't keep uh, energizing it continuously. You energize the piezoelectric just a split second it gives a sound waves. And then in known uh, time, you send another pulse. So that's called pulse. Pulse echo method, uh, that's why the name comes from an inspection method, the presence or position of reflector I indicated by each uh, echo amplitude and time. So there is a clock there that 
inside the machine practically. Uh, it could be electrical or mechanical clock that sort of uh, at known interval, they send a pulse. And that's why pulse echo method. You don't want to send continuously because it will interfere with, with themselves and uh, you see a lot of noise. And the reference block, they use both as a measurement scale and as a means of providing an ultrasonic reflection of known characteristic. So for example, you know, this is 0.25 millimeter. You put the probe here and then you calibrate your, uh, on the monitor, you should see 25 millimeter. So what you see the back wall echo is, should be 25 millimeter or actually technically 50 millimeter because it goes twice through the thickness. It goes once, hit the back and then come back. And then you adjust it to 0.25, adjust it to 0 0.70, 75, and one inch. And so now you have calibrated your distance or the baseline on your duty machine. Uh, reflector, the interface and interface at which an ultrasonic beam encounters a change in acoustic impedance and at which uh, at least part of energy is reflected. And refraction is when it, the sound hits from one medium and hits another medium. So uh, whatever is uh, uh, refracted is the same angle as you can see here. And then uh, there's a Snell's law. And then when it hits another medium, it changes its uh, uh, angle also if it passes through. So part of it is refracted uh, with the same angle. That's the Snell's law, and whatever is going through the second medium, it goes at a different angle. And uh, the Snell's law say that uh, the velocity of sound uh, changes uh, on a ratio of sine of this angle, theta one, to sine of theta two. Reject suppression, control, or minimizing or eliminating low amplitude signal. Um, uh, so that large signals are emphasized. That's like rejected or suppressed or dampened. Uh, resolution, the ability of ultrasonic equipment to give simultaneous separate indication from discontinuities, uh, having nearly the same range and lateral position with respect to the beam axis. So um, how you can res resolve uh, two defects or two indications from each other. And search unit is a, uh, the probe actually what they call an electroacoustic device uh, to transmit or receive ultrasonic energy or both of them. So it can be a dual search unit or a single search unit, which is one sends a signal and one receive it. So one should be at one side of the well, the other one should be on the other side of the well. Now, if you use a dual search, uh, which is both receiving and uh, transmitting, then uh, you just need to scan from one side of the web to receive a signal. Uh, the device generally consists of uh, obviously nameplate, uh, which says what is it, which megahertz is it, what's the diameter, a connector case backing piezoelectric element inside it, rear face, which is uh, the bottom of the plate. So to protect the piezoelectric um, wedge, which actually gives the angle of the beam. Uh, so we already give you a schematic of a probe before, just before. And sensitivity measure of the smallest ultrasonic signal that you can actually detect with ultrasonic system. And normally they say it's half a wavelength, that's uh, the minimum you can. Uh, so if you have a smaller wavelength, that means higher frequency, you have more uh, sensitivity here. Uh, but then the dumping is more, as we said, and the penetrating power is uh, less. Uh, shear wave, we already explained this. Uh, direction of particle motion perpendicular to the uh, motion of the sound is shear, whereas direction of particle along the motion is longitudinal. And sweep is the uniform repeated movement of an electro beam across CRT. So you are sort of widening the response or closing the response or removing some of the response uh, outside of the monitor uh, to focus on a particular response. So that's called sweep. Uh, through transmission technique, 
So test procedure in which the ultrasonic vibration are emitted by one search unit and received by another. So this is a, uh, you need one uh, transmitter and one receiver here. So if there is no defect, you see the back molecule here, um, the initial response and the back molecule would be same height. If you see a, a defect here, and from the tip of the defect until the another tip, the end, the beginning until the end, you will see this response. And this distance would be the depth of the defect. And as you move along, say if you come uh, up to this point, you'll see the defect. And after that, you'll see the normal, no defect. So that would be the length of the defect on your screen. Uh, type of flight, this is uh, very, very popular. This is uh, a completely new certification uh, called time of flight deflection. And uh, practically that means the time it takes for a sound wave to travel from a transmitting transducer to a floor and then to the receiving transducer. So you got two probes. This is dual true transmission. And one receives one and you can see there is a jig here where actually keep them at a constant distance. And then the world would be in the middle here between these two probes and it gets sending and receiving. And you see here um, the display here. So there is a defect, you see the display here because this are, uh, each of these probe has got three, four uh, transmitter and three, four uh, receiver this end. So you're practically scaling the whole area and you can see here the, there is some disturbance. So you can see that there is a defect here. It's very effective, very fast, and extremely popular nowadays with the industry. You don't need to know much about, but you just know what is this. Transducer, uh, again, uh, electroacoustic device for converting electrical energy to acoustic. This is uh, a real picture of that with the dimension and all that. You can see. What is it? And this is practically the number the manufacturer has given it. Uh, so it's a it's a prop actually, uh, the transducer. Uh, ultrasonic, obviously, any sound above twenty thousand hertz that's not detectable by human ear is called ultrasonic because you cannot hear it, and hence the name. And wedge is this is a practically a wedge uh, that protects the uh, piezoelectric and also uh, position the angle like it's, it's at an angle so position the angle of the probe so you would uh, uh, have an angle beam as well so that's called a wedge to direct the ultrasonic energy in the material at an angle that's what the wedge is for thank you